Hello, everybody. Welcome to the I Am IT YouTube channel. My name is Shabazz Dan. As ever, I am the IT geek. Welcome back to another episode in my Microsoft Cloud VDI series. Um, we are on the solution of AVD. We've already covered Microsoft DevBox and Windows 365 slash Cloud PC, whatever you call it. Um, and we've been talking about um, identities uh, spoiled in AVD. We're going to continue that discussion in this episode. So without further ado, let's get started. So as I mentioned, this is a Microsoft Cloud VDI series. Um, and we are looking at AVD spoiled identities. This is the second part in that topic. Today, we're going to cover federated identity. We're going to look at authentication methods, specifically cloud service authentication. Then we're going to do a bit of a demo around configuring IDB properties. And even the demos are two-part because there's a lot of configuration to do and a lot of options with configuring RDB properties. So we'll look at more of two demos as well uh, in one in the next episode. So let's talk about federated identity. So if you're using a third-party identity provider, or IDP, other than Microsoft Onter ID or Active Directory Domain Services. To manage your user accounts, you need to ensure that your IDP is federated with Onter ID, first of all, that your session hosts are Microsoft Onter joined or uh, Microsoft Onter hybrid joined, and also you need to enable the Microsoft Onter authentication to the session hosts as well. And AVD currently does not support external identities, okay, so that's very important to note. Um, Let's talk about authentication methods. So when, when accessing AVD resources, there are sort of three separate authentication phases. First one is in the cloud service authentication. We're going to actually talk about the, these three in a little bit more detail as we go. We've got another episode dedicated to identity um, as well. Um, so, so we've got the cloud service authentication. Now, authenticating to AVD service, this includes distributing to resources and authenticating to the gateway uh, is with, with kind of Microsoft Onter ID. We then have the authentication sort of phase of remote session authentication. So this is authenticating to the remote VM. And there are multiple ways to authenticate to the remote session, including the sort of recommended uh, SSO, single sign-on. And finally, we have the in-session authentication phase. So this is authenticating to applications and, and websites within the remote session, okay? Let's talk a little bit about the cloud um, service authentication phase. So to access AVD resources, you first authenticate to the service by signing in with the Onter ID account. Authentication happens uh, whenever you subscribe to retrieve your resources, connect to the gateway when launching a connection or when sending diagnostic information to the service as well. The Onter ID resource used for this authentication is AVD specifically, okay? Um, so, talk about the cloud service authentication, specifically MFA. So, um, to learn to learn how to configure MFA, we, we will take a look at. I think we're going to do it in one of the demos, but you can follow the instructions on Microsoft Learn documentation to learn how to enforce Entra MFA authentication for your deployment. We are going to do that, uh, and that article is also going to tell you how to configure how often your users are prompted to enter their credentials as well. When deploying onto joined VMs, uh, know that there's, there's that couple of extra steps or an extra step around um, uh, around the session host for, for VMs as well for onto join specifically. Okay. Uh, okay. Let's talk about passwordless now with cloud authentication, cloud service authentication. So you can use any authentication type supported by onto ID, such as Windows Hello for Business, or as, as you might see, uh, WHFB and other password authentication options, for example, FIDO keys to, to authenticate to that service. Uh, and then before we jump into the demo, let's talk a little bit about the smart card uh, cloud service authentication. So to use smart card to authenticate to Onter ID, you first need to configure Onter ID certificate-based authentication or configure uh, Active Directory federated services for user certificate authentication. Um, you can use third-party and it providers as long as they federate with Onter ID, as we mentioned earlier. Okay, let's jump into the demo portal again. We're going to actually look at specifically the RDB properties for the uh, session host um, that we added in the last episode. So please join me in the demo. Okay, welcome back to the demo portal. So back in the Azure portal, but we're in uh, AVD host pools. And we're in our demo HP. We've actually gone down to RDB properties. So this is the RDB properties that we're going to apply. Um, and these are at the host pool level, okay? Now, what I'll do is I'll cover connection information and session behavior in this one. In the next video, I'll cover device redirection, display settings in advance. So from a connection information, again, we've got big, big kind of warning here. Before you enable onto a single sign-on, make sure to follow the directions in their documentation for sort of the best experience. So again, here's where we can enable single sign-on. 
Um, so uh, ideally we want it because we want the best user experience. So, and we've got Ontra joined VMs as well. So um, let's enable um, Ontra authentication to provide single sign-on. And then from a credential security support, we can say RDP will use cred SSSP for if the operator supports cred SSSP, which is the default version. So again, it's up to you whether you configure that. I just tend to leave this at the default. Um, again, you may have, um, you might not want to use it for whatever reason, you just want to leave it or not configured. Let's click on not configured for argument's sake. Here's where we can put an alternative shell in place if we want, um, which will launch a connection. And then uh, we mentioned, um, we might not have you mentioned yet, but we're going to talk about, we're going to mention KDP proxy servers. Um, we'll talk about um, other authentication methods um, I think in the next episode. So this is where you would put the um, KDP proxy name in. Uh, apologies if you can hear any background noise. It is starting to rain quite heavily. I uh, just where my window is. Uh, so then we'll go to so, so save. Make sure we save that. It's always important to make sure you save before you jump in between tabs. Cut the session behavior now. now. This is where we can look at, so this is uh, the behavior of the session and when we're connected to it. So from a reconnection perspective, we've got the auto connection enabled uh, I value. So this determines whether the client computer will automatically try to reconnect the remote computer if the connection is dropped. So I tend to want to automatically try to reconnect. We've got bandwidth auto de detect as well. So this determines whether to use automatic network bandwidth de detection or not. It requires the option Bandwidth detect to be set to correlates with connection type seven. So here we can we can uh, use autom automatic network bandwidth or don't use network bandwidth. So I'll click on that uh, there. And um, again, we'll move on to the network auto detect. Um, this is the network auto detect I value. So this enables the option for automatic detection of your network type. And this is used in conjunction with the network auto detect. And um, also see the, the network sort of connection type here. So let's again enable that auto detect as well. Just closed the door behind me. I didn't realize it was open. That's why there's a lot of noise coming through. If you can, you might be able to hear that early in the video. So let's move on to compression now for session behavior. Um, again, this is the terms of whether the connection should use bulk compression or not. I normally just leave this and not configured. And then with video playback mode, this is the term whether RDC will use RDP efficient multimedia streaming for video playback. I just tend to leave this at the default. Again, let's just save what we've done. Um, and then we're going to move on to redirection and display settings in the next one. So I don't want to do too long a video. Uh, so that's um, us done with the sort of uh, kind of looking at the, the second part of the identity. Um, we're going to continue. Identity is a big topic when it comes to AVD. So we're going to continue with this in the next video as well. And, and we'll also complete sort of RDP properties as well within the demo. Um, so I want to thank everybody for their ongoing support. We are moving nicely with my subscribers. I'm, you know, I'm over 30K now, I'm touching 35. Um, so it's just been growing, growing well and getting lots of really positive comments around my videos. So I do appreciate that. Um, if you're not subscribed, why not get subscribing? Um, there's some useful links in, in below uh, in the description. Um, and again, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of we've done some links to my, my uh, previous videos as well around AVD, which you can see as well. So thank you for joining me. Until next time, goodbye.